Please, tell me what happened. Okay. Brent knew that if we didn't leave town, I was never gonna get clean. Brent didn't want us to lose us. He stayed by me through all this shit. I owe him. He's my brother. I love him. <laughs> Look at that Brent. Infamous First Light is a standalone DLC to Infamous Second Son, but you should play Second Son first to get a better understanding of First Light. First Light takes place before Second Son with Fetch as the main character. I thought that Fetch was the most interesting character in Second Son, but wasn't in the game nearly enough. So it's nice to see her take the spotlight and become a much more fleshed out character in this DLC. First Light takes place in Curtain K after Fetch was captured by the DUP. While Augustine trains her to be a lethal killer, Fetch has flashbacks to when she was in Seattle with her brother Brent. Most of the game takes place here, showing the events that led up to Brent's death. Knowing that Fetch will kill Brent even before you start First Light adds a bit of tension while you wonder when it'll happen, and it also makes you care more for him because you know what Fetch is about to go through. The story is more complex than what you learn in Second Son, which is thanks to a character named Shane. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever you say, sweetheart. He's an interesting character and he adds a lot to the story. And just like in Second Son, the acting is amazing, but unlike Second Son, First Light has a good story. It's still cheesy and predictable in parts, but there's better characters and some scenes are really well done. Whenever Fetch feels a strong emotion, you usually do too. Some of what I want to talk about in First Light is spoilers, so I will do that after the main review, and don't worry if you haven't played First Light, there will be a warning before that will happen. Fetch is the original owner of the Neon Powers. She uses them similarly to Delson, but there's quite a few new tricks that she has that makes the power feel fresh and fun all over again. For example, Fetch can dash through clouds of neon gas to give her a speed boost and can get fully automatic neon beams. Your skills with these powers are put to the test in the arcade-like Curtain K battle arenas, where you have to save hostages or survive as long as you can against endless waves of enemies. This is a really fun new addition to Infamous, and I spent a few hours trying to get high scores to beat my friends and get trophies. Unfortunately, this game mode gets boring once there are swarms of enemies and you just start shooting rockets and draining Neon over and over again until you get a Neon Singularity. The Singularity is basically First Light's Karma Streak. It's a black hole-like power that Fetch can use to defeat large groups of enemies once you fill up a meter. The Karma Streaks in Second Sun annoyed me because every time I used one I felt like I was just re-watching a short cutscene that I'd already seen again and again. Thankfully, you remain in control of Fetch while using the Singularity, and it doesn't last for too long. But what is too long is the game itself. While Second Sign was too short for the story it was trying to tell, First Light is too long for the story it tries to tell. The beginning and end of First Light are awesome, but there's a lot of filler content in between. The middle of the game drags on with a bunch of tedious missions that barely move the story along. But as soon as I got extremely bored with these missions, the game's emotional ending hit and it left me with a positive feeling towards First Light. Plus, there's the exclusion of the karma system, which made me feel free to do what I want without having to worry about being penalized. And it makes sense because Fetch's backstory was predetermined in Second Son. While in Seattle, you get to play in half of the map from Second Son. Even though Fetch can move a bit faster than Delson, and I thought that Second Son's map felt too small, First Light's map felt surprisingly just right. I feel like anything smaller would have made you feel restricted when traveling at Fetch's high speeds, and anything bigger would have felt too overwhelming for the short story. Being a DLC, First Light Seattle shares some of Second Sun's faults. The biggest being that the city doesn't feel alive due to citizens having extremely basic AI. But this story doesn't matter as much about the city itself, as it does the characters, which makes the lifeless city less noticeable. There are a lot of collectibles called Neon Lumens to find. <laughs> That's a boost. Most of them are above buildings and require you to use a carefully planned jump to reach them. I have mixed feelings about this because it was both interesting and annoying at the same time. There's also Lumen races where you can chase a Lumen while dashing through neon clouds. The races are fun and you feel really fast. Sometimes I accidentally got stuck on something that made me lose it, but that didn't happen too often. Come here, come yes! The last type of side mission you can do is Neon Graffiti. It's basically Fetch's version of Delson's tagging missions in Second Son. 
but it's a lot less complicated and fun. All of these side missions and collectibles are extremely repetitive, just like in Second Son, and a lot of it is left unexplained and doesn't have anything to do with the story. But at least they didn't shoehorn Blashards into another infamous game. Another thing that was never explained that kept on bugging me was Fetch going into blue neon sniper mode by grabbing a neon light in some missions. Oh well, at least there's a platinum trophy that was mostly easy but still fun to get, and the soundtrack is just as awesome as Second Sons, plus there's some music from the first infamous game in the arenas. First Light still doesn't feel that much like Infamous to me, but it's a little bit closer. There's more comic cutscenes than there were in Second Sun, sometimes the lighting looked very grey and similar to Infamous, and the story was darker. But the most important thing is that I didn't really care. First Light gave me something else that I liked. It wasn't that Infamous feeling, but I was accepting of it. After playing Second Sun, I wasn't expecting much out of First Light, but it surprised me, and I liked it. Sucker Punch still has a long way to go, to restore the excellence that the Infamous series once had, but this is an improvement. Alright, so if you're here, then I am assuming that you have already played Infamous First Light, and that you are ready for me to talk about some spoilers. Okay, let's do this. I thought that Shane was a very well done character, and that you pretty much end up hating him as much as Fetch does, and Brent's death scene surprised me in how good and like emotionally immersive it was, and I like almost cried. I, I, I didn't quite cry, but seeing Fetch cry and seeing that was kinda hard to watch and it almost made me cry too. But it does feel like Sucker Punch kinda changed how Brent died from Fetch's flashback in Second Son, and how First Light does it can like fit into that flashback, but not without having to like stretch it a little bit, if you know what I mean. But I can say that I liked the First Light version of Brent's death more than the original version that was told through Fetch's flashback in Second Son. It just seems weird to me that they would go back and change something in the story that they made earlier. Anyways, the ending was awesome. I can't imagine how much Having Karma in this DLC would have messed up the game's story, like with that ending and how Fetch is just trying to kill Shane. But I think that this sort of revenge story did work very well. And Shane's death was also one of the prettiest death scenes I've ever witnessed. So yeah, that's it for the spoiler section. It's much shorter than the full actual main review. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, then please click the like button. And have a great day.